Joining me now is a mother whose two kids were kidnapped by Hamas terrorists this morning. We are not going to identify her or her children for their safety. Thank you so much for talking to us. I cannot imagine what you're going through. Please tell us what happened this morning. Um, on 6.30 in the morning, we all woke up to the uh, red alert that we all unfortunately used to. Um, since I was away, uh, they were alone on the security room, and unfortunately they used to that as well. Um, they were with me on the phone, and by about 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, they said they are starting to hear shootings, of gun shooting outside. They heard, they, they heard gunshots uh, outside. Yeah. Um, and I started getting uh, messages, texts uh, from other people telling that um, terrorists are walking around free and trying to break in and get into houses. And about 8.30, they heard the door break. They said someone was breaking the door, someone was breaking the door. They were scared to death. I can't even imagine what they felt. And I wasn't there to help. Oh, I was on the phone. Uh, and I said, just be quiet, stay quiet. We stay in the security room and lock the door. But the doors don't really lock. Um, they're not meant to. They're not meant to give a solution to that kind of situation. No one ever thought terrorists would walk down free in our um, places. Uh, at about quarter to nine, um, I heard online on the phone the door break. I heard um, terrorists speaking in Arabic to my teenagers and the youngest saying to them, I'm too young to go there. I was 16 and 12, so it was very, very hard to, to hear. And uh, the phone went off, the line went off. That was the last time I heard from them. Yeah. It was a very, very hard day. Many, many people uh, from our place and from other places were taken. They took babies, they took two-year-olds, five-year-olds, mothers, just innocent citizens who so did nothing wrong. They were just sleeping in their beds. I mean, even war has rules. They just don't have any morals. They just... It's something that you don't do. And I, you know, I, I always tell I always tell my kids when uh, Lisa was shot at us that the kids in Gaza are struggling and having a hard life, a lot more than them. But now, I'm not sure I'm right to be so moral about this. The, um... They took people over 80. They took sick people. They took people who were shot, wounded, dragged them into Gaza. You don't kidnap citizens just like that. You don't. You just don't. And it just means how cruel they are and, and how... Sorry, I'm very, um, very... You don't need to apologize to me. You don't need to apologize. I can't imagine what you're going through. I have two teenagers myself. I can't... I can't imagine what it, I would be going through. It doesn't what I'm going through. I mean, you know, what I'm worried about is what they're going through. Yeah. I don't know if they eat. I don't know if they had to make the drink. I don't know if they're together. I don't know if they're apart. I don't know if they're dressed. I don't know if they're tortured. I don't know has, anything. Has anyone from the military or the government come by to, to say anything, to talk to a, any of you? No. no? Well, no, but I can't really blame anyone. It was a very, very difficult day in Israel. I mean, hundreds died, thousands wounded, and probably hundreds taken, kidnapped to Gaza Strip. We don't really know how many. It's a, it's a very, very hard day. So it's going to take, it's obviously taking time to get to all the people and to, to have everything reorganized in some way.
It might be. It, it's. No, I, um, I had no connection and no information. That's all. It's. Um, we've heard. We've heard people um, in Israel say that this is like. Israel's 9-11 or Israel's Pearl Harbor, just a, a, a day that will live in infamy, to use the language that President Roosevelt used about Pearl Harbor. Is it, is it that, mag, that a day of that magnitude? Obviously, for you, it is the worst day of your life. But for the country, is it of that magnitude? It is. It is. I think it's... Um I don't know how to, you know, I, I can't really compare it to anything. But it's obviously a day that will be remembered for a very, very long time. Um, and there's obviously a lot to, to learn and to... But it's, this is not the time now uh, to deal with that. The time now is to release all those innocent people in the gas ship who are hoarded hostages for... For nothing. For nothing. I mean, the people that we keep here in our prisons are people who are, who are doing terror. Who are dealing with terror. Yeah. Mostly men. The, um, it's unbelievable that they just, they just think they can hold anyone they want and do anything they need. You know, just, as I said, war has rules. Even war has rules. This is obviously the fault of the terrorists who did it, and I don't want my next question to be interpreted in any other way. But I have heard and read questions from Israelis about where was the IDF? Why was the IDF not in the area? Why did it take so long for the IDF to get to the eastern part of the country? Why were so many of them on the western part of the, in the West Bank, et cetera? Is that something that you're thinking about? I mean, you were talking about how your safe room is not, it was set up not for terrorists to be able to stroll down the street and walk into your home. Is that something yeah. that you're thinking about? Obviously, obviously. And, and, and there will be time that um, all these questions will need to be answered. And um, the IDF definitely took, took long to arrive and took long to uh, to take charge. Um, we've learned later that uh, the, the main base that is supposed to be giving answers in this situation to this area was also under attack. Yeah. And many commanders were shot. So I'm not trying to make any excuses for them. We were waiting for them, and people were staying in the security rooms begging for help. Certainly, there's a lot to learn for the IDF and for others, for others, the government, for the country itself. They obviously lost faith, our faith, which was also, you know, we had to have some faith in the country uh, and in the government and in the IDF in order to live here at all in the first place. A lot of people are asking me why. Why, how I can live in a place like that? Right. No, I don't think I'm... anyone could ever imagine this is going to happen. No, I, I certainly No understand. one in Israel could have this nightmare yeah. even thought about. Because as I said, war has rules. Well, we're going to stay in touch with you, and, and we're all going to be thinking about you and your your teens tonight and praying for you. Um, Thank you very much for having me, and I hope they will all be released soon. They're only innocent young people, adults, babies, women, children, elderly people. They have, they, there's nothing to do with the war in Gaza. They have nothing to do there. Yeah. Thank you for talking to us. We have a big army to fight. If they want to fight, fight the army. Now <laughs> take some on your side. Thank you for talking to us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jacob, for having me.